It'll be a very strange sort of event tomorrow night, but you are going to see it right here on Newsroom Africa Channel 405. Let's get some analysis of it. Now, Roland Henwood's a political scientist at the University of Pretoria. Roland, good afternoon to you. I mean, I suspect, I mean, in the past, normally you have sort of broad sweeps. There may be five or ten big issues the president's going to talk about during the State of the Nation address. I would suggest tomorrow night there are probably only two things that we really are very interested in. The one is vaccines in the pandemic, and the other is the economy and growing jobs. Uh, good afternoon, Stephen, and also to your viewers. Yes, I think um, it's not only going to be pared down in terms of the numbers of people and the pomp and ceremony, but probably also the focus. And this is a real challenge to President Ramaphosa. The two issues, um, vaccines, COVID, dealing with it, the bad news this week that the AstraZeneca vaccine is probably not the one to be used, you know, or not as expected, and then the economy. Um, and the economy covers vast territory deals with unemployment, it deals with economic growth, it deals with the lack of um, being accrued in the, in the name of the state. It deals with everything that affects what we, are, what we are facing in South Africa. And I think this is maybe the important point. The president this year will not have the luxury of going back into history to, to create an, a situation that he wants to do because the focus is on what is happening where we are and then the knowledge that good, it doesn't in any way give confidence for the future. And that is probably his biggest challenge. How do you provide confidence? How do you lift the country um, out of where we are into something that is positive? Um, we must remember that the president has spoken to South Africans a lot in the last month, in the last year, regularly, giving the kind of update that often would be the preserve of SONA. That's not going to cut it if that's what he does tomorrow evening. It's actually very difficult. I mean, literally everyone I speak to now has a horror story of COVID-19. Someone who died, someone who was in hospital, someone who was very ill, someone who didn't get the care that they wanted. I mean, some people have lost more than one relative sometimes, you know, in, in, in a matter of week. And on top of that is the fear, the fear that it could happen to me or it could happen, you know, to someone in my family. The president now needs to provide reassurance and optimism and that's really hard to do and I, I would imagine the pressure is actually on him to announce a date in which vaccinations will start well that's one of the expectations a date but also to to give confidence in terms of government's ability to manage the process um, apart from the negativity that we see the, the issue of fear we also see a sense of intransigence developing People have lost confidence in government's ability. And people are openly questioning the leadership abilities of the president. And this is difficult, but probably what is needed more than anything else is for him to demonstrate that ability that he has, but people are questioning it. And I think tomorrow night will be a very important opportunity to demonstrate that ability and to make careful announcements. This is not the time to make promises but announcements that are linked to deliverable, to be specific, not to leave everything to someone else to, to provide some details later on that can be challenged and questioned. So yes, he has it cut out. This is a very, very difficult sonar that he has to deliver. I'm going to say something, Roland, that's actually quite strange, which is I suspect in the shorter term, vaccinating the population, getting through the pandemic is one thing. I mean, we're not alone. The whole world is involved in this. We've got lots of very clever scientists who are working on it. Uh, the chances are that together the world, I mean, hopefully we'll come up with a vaccine, we'll work, we'll get it rolled out. Uh, and that's probably a one to two year problem. Hopefully, I'm very optimistic. But if you look at the problem of the economy, I mean, from the 1970s, unemployment has gone up. And now, of course, we know that we lost at least 2 million jobs in the last year because of the lockdowns that had to be imposed because of the pandemic. It would seem actually, over the longer term, much harder to grow the economy in a way, to come up with an economic policy that will create jobs. Undoubtedly. Um, and there are a number of issues at play here. Firstly, questions of the belief in government. And then secondly, the issue of plans. I mean, we are rolling out plan after plan after plan, and we don't see the results. 
Um, a new plan probably is not going to be enough to satisfy people and to satisfy the demands that we see, and these are legitimate demands. Emphasis must be on deliverable. Um, so if you have a new plan, you have to um, present it differently. You have to link it to clear deliverables, clear responsibilities, clear outcomes. The problem is we are at the stage where a plan is not enough. That's not our biggest problem. Our problem is the capacity of government to deliver on these plans in the room. The lack of capacity in government, but also the massive problems we have with um, corruption. And yes, it's corruption in government and the private sector, but the, the, the starting point here is government. That is the engine that that President Ramaphosa is pushing forward to drive this. So we need to address that. The other issue is the policies, decisions we make. And let's be honest, we are shooting ourselves in the foot in South Africa continuously. Yes, the whole world is in a problem, but we are underperforming. And there's no reason for us to underperform. There's no reason for us to lag behind others in Africa, especially, but also in the rest of the world. So we really have to rethink our approach, our policy frameworks, the decisions we make. And then very importantly, this is an opportunity for President Ramaphosa to lead South Africa, not to be, get bogged down in ANC issues. We know what those are, but this is an opportunity to lead South Africa. But it's going to take some doing. He has to show that he has it and he can deliver on those issues. It's a really important point you make. I mean, when you talk about leadership there, um, one of the problems, perhaps, is that in, in creating a state and in sort of trying to use presidential power, ritual, the events before the state of the nation, the 21-gun salute, the military parade, the uh, moment where you see school children lining the route, some of them often in, in the National Assembly, uh, the military bands, all of those things actually help a president, don't they? They help the person who's about to give the speech. They also speak to South Africa as a nation. These rituals are important. The television image of the president coming up the road, being greeted by the military, uh, seeing the judges there, all of these things are important. It's where the state comes together, and there are a whole lot of symbols that are part of this, you know. And, I mean, a good example is uh, Anthea Gorman, the, the, the young poet laureate in the United States. I mean, she was a symbol of how that country is changing. Now, we're going to have none of that tomorrow because we can't. Doesn't that actually make the president's that, job a million yeah. times harder? Definitely so. I think he has two important immediate challenges. The first is that we have grown accustomed to see um, The second issue is that we see the pomp and ceremony stripped from the um, opening of parliament and that makes it difficult because the president cannot rely on and i say this with respect the props of the state to to create the environment the atmosphere this is going to be to a large extent he's going to make or break the session not only in what he says but the how of what he, of, of, of doing it is going to be exceptionally important tomorrow night and very difficult. Roland Henwood, thanks very much indeed. Do appreciate it. Uh, political scientist at the University of Pretoria. Well, coming up.